Yeah, so I think I think these are things that I figured out over time, but I guess my younger self didn't know is that you know if you focus if you focus in on solving tough problems, right? And um, problems that seem crazy, right? If I told you I could predict the future and what patents would be issued, anybody would have called me crazy. But um, uh, but if you if you if you reach for the stars metaphorically, you know, eventually you'll catch one, right? Maybe you will. Versus what a lot of people do is they're like, ah, those stars are too far away and you can't catch them. I'll just sit there and, and keep doing what I'm doing. And what happens is that complacency is a road to mediocrity. And sometimes when you reach for the stars, you can't quite reach them, right? Um, but in trying, you become your better self. So you should never get discouraged that problems are impossible. And more than a few times in my career, people have told me, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard, right? That's ridiculous. You know, that happened. I was openly mocked when I, when I started this effort to expand the patent office outside of DC. I was scoffed at. I was laughed at by my partners. Well, what do you know? Denver has a patent office now. And it took me, you know, 10 years of trying through two administrations, a lot of trips to DC, you know, a lot of talking to politicians, sometimes writing checks to politicians. And what do you know? We have a patent office in Denver when uh, people thought it was absolutely crazy because since the beginning of time, we, the United States has only had one patent office. But, you know, the stars aligned and, and only by reaching for them could you end up with um, uh, an accomplishment like that. Or even, you know, going from legal services to developing software, same sort of thing, where just people think it's crazy. Well, you know, we just, we wait for our phone to ring. And I'll tell you, I have many partners today on the legal services side where that is their business strategy. We wait for the phone to ring. And then when it rings, we pick it up very quickly, right? Um, well, uh, how do you get out in front of that? Especially when for your clients, it's much you're doing a much better job if you can be proactive about it. So what I often do is I'm watching what's going on at particular companies. You know, are they going through an acquisition? Did they just get bought by somebody? Um, you know, and, and there's opportunities, right? I just, one of my clients just today, there was a big announcement on their big data side, how they teamed up with big tech on something. So I was reading through that article, and the next time I talk to the data scientists there, I'm already going to be ahead of thinking about how that might align with what we're doing and how we can protect innovation now that the world has changed a little bit. And things are constantly changing. So I think that would be the other thing that I would tell my younger self is embrace change. Right? Change is a scary thing. And I think as humans, we like to have patterns and routines, and it makes our lives easier. But again, it's a road to complacency. Because once it's gotten routine, you're on the way to being replaced by something or some machine. So seek out those things that are unpredictable and uh, nettlesome. And by seeking out those challenges, if you will, you will find you're, you're doing much more valuable work, right? Um, other things I would tell my younger self is that, you know, as you're, as you're kind of, um, you know, people give you advice, right? You're young, you're in your, you're beginning at your career, you know, how do I have a great career and stuff like that? And um, <laughs> this was advice I got from a, uh, partner, he's still a friend of mine, and I still hang out with him. But he said, you know, half the job is just showing up for work, right? And what he meant by that was that so many people just don't show up for work. 
right? They just don't show up engaged, ready to go, thinking about their client stuff, thinking about how to make a difference. They get complacent. And um, I guess complacency is theme here, but you know, showing up for work day in, day out, working hard, um, you know, relentlessly um, pursuing the profession is how you get things done. And it's frustrating because often it cannot happen as quickly as you want it to happen, right? You're early in your career and you want to have an amazing career. So it's like, I want an amazing career and I want it now. Well, it doesn't happen now. And what happens is you show up to work, you swing that pick, and one day you'll hit gold. But if you don't swing a pick, you will not hit gold. And so many people figure out a way to, eh, it's kind of hard to pick up a pick and swing it. I'm just going to sit here and kind of think about gold and think about gold landing in my lap. And it just never does under the circumstances. You've got to get out there and you've got to swing that pick. And only by doing that day in, day out, showing up to work, sincerely engaging in what you do, are you going to be, you know, strike that, you know, that huge vein of gold that makes you wealthy. But I will tell you that that was great advice because you don't have to be the smartest person on earth. You don't have to be incredibly lucky. If you're working in a profession where people are generally successful and you're working hard, you will, you will probably be successful. Um, you know, there's some professions that have no future, right? Perhaps, and that might be tougher, but if you're in a, an area that, uh, successful people are in and you work hard you swing that pick diligently every day you show up to work you simply show up to work and i will tell you just looking at you know I'm not going to name any names but just looking across the industry it's very easy to get complacent especially after you get a little bit of success is you know that that fancy car you can't it takes a little bit of time to figure it out you know, the fancier cars tend to have, have all these buttons, right? And you got to figure them out, right? Especially the German cars. Well, a long time ago, I just said, yeah, that's not my thing. I buy simple cars all the time, <laughs> even though I can afford that fancy car today. So you can get a real case of affluenza, which is certainly an epidemic in the United States. Is we have so much affluence, we seem to focus in on things that don't matter in any real sense. Uh, so you, you can get those distractions. And next thing you know, you're not showing up to work and you're not swinging that thing. So I think I'm at three. Um, idea number four, um, build up relationships, right? In so many jobs, at some point, the relationships are the things that distinguish you. And it's tough. It's tough when you're really busy. Today, um, I, I worked on getting a couple uh, baseball tickets for a contact of mine. Uh, the firm was looking looking around, and this guy did me a favor. He'd done a referral. He, he was shut, winding down his practice to the referral to his best client. And it didn't actually come into me. I never got a call from them prospect they went with council they were are using in another area but nonetheless i i sent him a, a set of base, baseball tickets and he's working at a company i don't think i could ever even get the work it's not the sort of thing that we could do but he's a nice guy he did me a favor i did him a favor so it's those little favors and it's those little thoughtful interactions you have um, with folks and it's just nurturing that network because what happens more often than not is you focus in on other things. Like I see it a lot on the legal services side is you're working really hard to become a partner. And then when you're a partner, all of a sudden you've got to generate business. So you're calling up your contacts for the first time. You haven't talked to them in 15 years since you were in law school or something like that together. And they know exactly why you're calling. And they're like, where were you, you know, 15 years ago, right? Or 10 years ago, or five years ago. So keeping that network, um, of, of people that you know. And when somebody does you a favor, you know, try and reciprocate, you know, and sometimes you just never know what's going to happen, but it's a very small world. 
it's a very, very small world as you get to be specialized in a particular profession. And, you know, the people that help you out, you help them out. And, you know, sometimes you'll help out somebody. I've done lots of favors for particular people and nothing's come of it. And there's other people where, you know, the next thing you know, uh, you did somebody the smallest act of kindness. And uh, that ends up being your biggest business opportunity. So investing in your network, right? and sincerely engaging in it and you know it took me 20 minutes to figure out how to get the tickets and get the tickets to this person and i was incredibly busy today so you know i flew flew out from another city this morning and then just was in meetings all day and i didn't have 20 minutes to spend but you really dedicating time to that because there never is time to do somebody a favor but if you do nobody a favor you will receive no favors um, uh, that's certainly true. So we're at four. And then five is just a word. Um, it's sincerity, right? Is be sincere and do things for the right reasons. Do so something for your client because it's good for them. And you're posed with these situations all the time where I have one right now where we had some bad advice for this particular client and it's the sort of thing that they would probably never know about it. You know, they would never uncover it, but probably we spent a hundred thousand dollars on work that didn't need to be done for them. And I talked to two colleagues of mine and one said, just don't tell them. And the other one said, you tell them right away and you tell them you're going to reverse those invoices. And as difficult as that might be, you're going to end up with a stronger relationship. So be sincere and, you know, adopt your customers or your clients' problems as your own. So this particular client has had some budgeting issues and they're going to be tickled pink when I tell them, look, I talked to the firm, we're going to reverse $100,000 with the charges. And um, they're going to be super happy. They're going to be super happy because it helps them on the budget. They be, may be mad about um, us making a mistake. But at the end of the day, it ends up being a very long-term relationship. And they will remember that you helped them out. And especially they'll remember that they'll be 